So in today's video, it's about two tricks for Bitfix Studio. It's not specific for Bitfix Studio version 5, but it can help in certain situations. Um, so the first one is about Unison. So you can apply Unison to um, different uh, devices or um, uh, synthesizers without having actually Unison available. So this becomes pretty handy here uh, when you have some kind of polymer uh, patch and most of these oscillators you can choose inside of the polymer don't have unison at all the only one that supports unison is the wavetable and you can uh, create up to 16 voices okay so when you have here the scroll it's just one single voice and that's it what you can do, of course, is you can select the device itself and then you can use here on the left side in the inspector, you can use voice stacking. So you can create five voices and then you use, you use the voice stack modulator, right? Switch this to minus one to plus one and then you modulate here the pitch. And then you get something like this. So it's kind of also a chorus, but that's not what I'm talking about in this video. Um, so here we have one single voice. And to create now multiple voices, it's actually pretty easy inside of the node grid. Uh, because here we have a node input. That's what we get from the keyboard or from the piano roll. And then we can modify the signals and then we output here one single note. But what we do now is we, instead of outputting one note, we output two notes. And the second node you gets the MIDI channel too. And I do this for two purposes. Uh, the one, the first purpose is um, it's actually needed to, to hold these voices over time. I found if you don't do this, or if you just leave it on MIDI channel one or two um, nodes on MIDI channel one, um, so some of these voices disappear over time for some reason. I don't know what's the what's the, what's the reason behind this. Is maybe that's a bug. I have no idea. I think it worked before in some of the earlier versions, but in but Bitwig Studio version five, you have to use multiple uh, MIDI channels for some reason to um, persist these notes over time and you hold the note. So here we have now two notes as an output: MIDI channel one, MIDI channel two. And for Unison, of course, we have to use a transpose to actually detune these voices, right? So what I do here is I use a macro and I want to go here in this direction to 20. I think 20 semitones is the maximum value before it starts to getting too detuned or too out of tune. So that's my, my rough number always when I just want to slightly detune something but want to stay in pitch. So this is uh, uh, point 20 semitones, okay? So now we should have two voices. But we actually only have one voice. Oh, it's uh, still in voice tech mode, yeah. So you can see playing voices here on the left side in the inspector, only one. And the reason for that is uh, that you have to disable here still same key. It's basically some kind of CPU safe mode. Um, so every time you press the same note twice on the keyboard, maybe fastly one after the other, right in um, in sequence, then uh, Bitwig tries to stop the first voice and then you play the second voice so you can save some CPU power with this. But in this case, we don't want to save CPU power. We want to play actually multiple voices. So you disable steal same key. And now we have two voices, right? You can see this here. So the trick here is basically we duplicate the input node, our key, our keys on the keyboard, duplicate each node we are pressing to multiple keys and each of these keys gets a slightly different pitch and a different uh, MIDI channel. And then you get basically multiple voices from just one cent. You, you basically play in some kind of chord, uh, but the chord is just one note basically. And all these notes are slightly Pitch, pitch banded, right? Uh, 
Um, at the same time, you can also do something here. Uh, maybe move this over here. You can extend this um, by using also here uh, pressure and timbre and also loudness and panning, which is also interesting. We can use a value button here. Uh, switch this to bipolar mode on the left side. So we have minus and plus because it's panning, right? This is the center, left, right, and so on. And we uh, connect this here to the panning output. Uh, duplicate this over here. And then we also, um, yeah, maybe go here to full. 100% left side, 100% to the right side okay so now we have two voices you move this over here and now we can just duplicate this again and here we say this is uh, midi channel three this is midi channel four um here we modulate instead of uh you go to what's that here that's plus 21 that's plus um maybe 15. Um, and this is minus 15. And here we also go to maybe 50%. And also here to 50%. So now we should have four voices playing. And with this knob, you can change the amount of the unison in some kind of way. And uh, now we can do the same thing here. Just duplicate all the all the the stuff again. And here we go to that's twenty one, maybe ten. Um, let's go to ten here. And this is maybe maybe five. And yeah, here we go to this amount, this amount, this amount, this amount, uh, four, this is five, this is six, this is seven, eight, okay. You can see here now on the playing voices indicator, we have now eight voices playing. And at some point you have to increase here the maximum number of voices, of course, if you want to play chords. And you have to switch the note grid also here from mono mode to I want to play multiple voices. And now you can play just chords and each of these notes of the chords get these eight notes, basically. And to make this a bit more interesting, you can also use your random modulator. Uh, switch this to Hertz so it's not bound to the BBM. And let this uh, free running here. And then modulate in this direction. So with this trick, you can basically implement unison uh, on any on any Bitwig synthesizer whatsoever. It doesn't matter. You don't need to use the polymer. You can also use organ device, all these old devices that don't support unison. What you also can do is you can multiply this um, when you use a wavetable, right? And you have already unison here with the note grid. You can then switch here to unison settings in the wavetable and add additional voices, so 16 voices. So now we have basically 8 by 16. But then you can murder your CPU pretty fast again. All right, so you have to you have to be careful with, with all the voices um, you can create with this kind of trick. It's basically the same thing. Um, I did in some of my recent videos where I showed you um, how to
uh, create unison voices uh, with the Moody node. So you have to be careful, right? But you can stack this up if you want to. Um, so let's go back here to Sawtooth. Okay, so the second tip or the sick, uh, second trick I did recently, um, that's when you have some kind of um, generative patch or maybe if you want to perform something um, in Bitwig Studio itself with your track over time, um, there's some kind of parameter you can modulate that's pretty interesting actually for that, this kind of stuff. So if we have some kind of droney sound here, something like this here the first track is basically let's remove this here the first track is basically a step sequencer here uh, it's a note grid playing some notes and then it's mm, playing here on this polymer and i also use cc1 cc2 and some modulations here um, to create a sound and maybe we can also use here a random mod just to get some more uh, modulations here and maybe we modulate here the, the filter. So we have some kind of automation applied here to this filter, right? And also on the second track here, I have some kind of drone. Uh, it's a polymer synthesizer also playing notes and the notes are generated here with a note grid. It's just a drone outputting note grid. So some notes I like. Um, this out and we also we have also here a lot of modulations we have here random modulators uh, modulating all kinds of targets okay so and this forms kind of the sound and when you want to perform this you probably have to uh, create some kind of project modulators maybe um macro to change some modulations in on some of these uh, tracks or some of these synthesizers or effects um, you also can use a curve here like i showed you in some of my recent videos where you use some kind of curves modulator dial in your bars and say maybe uh, this is 16 bars long um, switch this to unipolar mode here um, reset this and then create just some kind of modulation or some track arrangement stuff where you say always at the end of 16 bars i want to raise here the signal and then you use the signal uh, to, to open up filters or to bring in sounds or mute sounds so you have this kind of like 16 bar uh, progress progressive um, uh, modulation happening without using automation um, to create some kind of longer arrangement or micro arrangement. Um, so you can also use, of course, here the uh, macro for this to change certain things, right? Uh, you can say it's maybe intensity. Um, then you increase. Uh, maybe here you open up the filter. Also here. Right, so you can increase the intensity of the whole track by using a global modulator and open up filters and stuff like this. But that's just normal. I showed you this in some of our recent videos. But there's one parameter you can use also additionally to that to change the intensity. And this is um, if you select your intensity output and you go to the drone synthesizer here and you click maybe on the synth itself, you see on the left side all the modulation that are applied on the synthesizer. You can see here we have a random mod modulating the index. We have a random two modulator uh, modulating the cutoff. So now when you have selected here the modulator handle of this macro, you can just click on this and then you get the second uh, amount slider here, right? For this specific modulation. So now with this knob here, we can ch change the modulation intensity of this modulation so the random mod modulates the index of the wavetable and at the moment nothing happens but when we increase this here you can see 
Now the amount of modulation from random modulator one to the in to the index is at 100%. So you can decrease or increase the modulation amount of modulators. And all you have to do is basically click on these buttons here, right? On this synthesizer and on, on the first track here, we can also go to this or here to this polymer synthesizer and see. Uh, we want to change here all the modulation amounts of all these connections. And now you can see or you can hear that it's pretty quiet, nothing, nothing really happens because the intensity slider is at zero, so all the modulations are zero, zero percent. And then you can slowly increase all these modulations at the same time. So this is something that's probably pretty helpful in um, in cases where you want to create some kind of live um, a performance and you want to quickly change the amount of all these modulations. It's basically the same thing as um, if you know phase four. Um, here, when you apply basically cross modulations, you modulate here with the blue operator, the red one, right? You can see here the, we have some kind of global modulator slider. And here you can bring all the modulations down. So we have basically a sign when you, when you bring this in, you bring also here the modulation in. So it's some kind of global modulation amount you can uh, use here with this uh, macro button or you can use of course the curves here for that if you want to. And it's super easy actually because you just, just select the handle, go here to the synthesizer you want to, uh, change the modulation amounts and then you click on all here the mappings on the left side. Um, let's go back here to this one, click on that, click on polymer and you can see here all the mappings, right? Uh, it's pretty easy, pretty powerful and uh, fast to do because you have just to click once. So these are basically two tips and tricks I want to show you in this video. Um, so yeah, I hope it's kind of helpful. I have a lot of more uh, things to come on this channel. I have some more ideas I want to show you. I just have to slowly roll it out, of course. And um, yeah, that's it. If you found it helpful, please leave, leave a like. Every interaction on YouTube is actually helpful for me. So leave a like. Also, maybe if you just watch the video, leave a smiley in the comments. I have no idea. Just ask some random questions. Um, subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you back in the next video. Thanks for watching and bye.